Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Nations the Dice Game, which is basically, I guess you could say, the little brother to Nations, which, as some of you may remember, was my absolute number one top game of last year. And in fact, it's in my top 10 games of all time. And so now we are going to demonstrate just how well Nations the Dice Game is as a follow up. I'm going to be doing a two player run through today. I will be the nation of Egypt, Jen will be. Persia. Although I should say it doesn't really matter. All nations start out exactly the, the same way. There's no uniqueness. We all start out with one money chit, one re-roll chit, because there'll be a lot of rolling of dice in this game, as you might imagine. And everybody starts with a temple, a quarry, an axeman, which provides our military, the quarry, our stone, the temple, our culture, the farm, our food, and the caravan, our money. Although, not really. That's actually kind of misleading. Basically, each of these five I don't know, pillars of our nation, really just provides one white die. And we're going to roll these dice, and I could turn up anything. I just might get a whole bunch of culture and no food. You know, our temple goes overboard and our caravan um, doesn't produce anything, you know, because I just end up getting a whole bunch of culture after I roll. Who knows what's going to happen? Because it's a dice game! So, let's start rolling. Oh, there's a little bit more. As part of setup, in a... In a one, two, or three player game, you put out three by three, this little grid of era tiles. We're in the first era, you know, kind of the antiquities, you know, the, the ancient world, and in, a, in this two player game, or three player game, or one player game, nine of the, what is it, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, nine of the 15 tiles come out. If we were playing a four player game, these would get filled in as well. So even in a four player game, there'd be three tiles that don't come out. Also, we have the end of era events. At the end of this era, we are going to have to, well, we don't have to, but if we can set aside up to uh, two food, we'll score a victory point for keeping our people well fed. And if we set aside one military, we'll score a victory point for taking care of any encroachers that might be messing with us. Now, those are bonus points that can be had at the end of the round. And this game takes place over four rounds, one round for each era. And at the beginning, um, you know, the, having the correct number of food and military only produces one. But by the end, having the correct number of food, say three food, can score four points. Six military can score four points. i got to shuffle these back up now, so I don't know what they are. So, hitting these targets is a big potential scoring opportunity. But there are plenty of other ways to score points throughout the game, and we're going to do that now. Let's see. Also, everybody starts at zero victory points, and I'm the first player, so I start with one culture, or books, and Jen starts with three. Um, because it's a two-player game. If we were playing a three-player game, the second player would have two, the third player would have three. But in a two-player game, there's a little bit of a split to give the second player a bit more of an advantage. Right, that's everything. So I know everything, and so we're ready to get going. First thing we do after we get all our stuff out is, in turn order, I'm going to grab all my dice, and I'm also going to grab... Now these just represent permanent boons that my society has. Uh, and again, we all have access to this. I will be able to re-roll... I'll be able to re-roll once if I don't like what I get, and I've got one guaranteed money. But we'll see what else I roll. See, and see. So I got mole money. Got some food, some more food, and some military. This is what my society has been able to produce in this first era. We're making a lot of food, we're a little bit warlike, we've got some money, and if I wanted, I could re-roll once. And if I choose to do this, I, anytime I use any of these things, either the dice or a chit, you put them up here to indicate that they're used and you can't use them again for the, for the era, for the, for the round. And so, I've got to decide how am I going to spend these dice. Now remember, we've got some targets. At the end of the era, I want to have two food so I can score that point. So I just might hold these off to the side and not use them, not re-roll them, because I'm saving them so I can feed my people, because they're going to be hungry. And I could also set aside this military and, hey, boom, I've mailed two points, guaranteed. So, if that's the case, that means I've only got two more dice, plus a money, plus re-roll. Now, maybe I don't want to chase after that extra victory point. Maybe I want to re-roll this and do something else with it. But for now, I mean, I, I can choose to re-roll later. I don't have to re-roll right now. So I think for starters, I'm just going to use some of this cash money I've got. Ooh, no, actually. Well, basically, what you do is, after you're done rolling, you take any number. Well, you have a few choices. You can buy a tile. You can build a wonder. 
or you can re-roll. Those are the three things I can choose from. Now, I'm not gonna re-roll right now. Maybe I'll change my mind later and re-roll. Ah, there's a mosquito. Where have all these mosquitoes come from? Ah, oh, please don't bite me, mosquito. Anyway, so went through the whole summer with no mosquitoes, and now all of a sudden, when mosquitoes should be gone, they're just like flooding our house. Urgh. All right, anyway though, so what am I thinking about here? Right. Now, for starters, of course, you're going to want to buy tiles. You're going to want to improve. That's the main thing we're doing throughout this game is trying to get tiles to improve our civilization, to improve our nation, improve our nation. Um, and the ones on the lowest <coughs> row cost the least. The icon on the left of a tile tells you you either have to pay money to get the tile or you have to use your military to get the tile. So if I wanted to conquer Babylonia and get a colony in Babylonia, it would cost me one sword. If I wanted to get the Hanging Gardens, it would cost me two money. If I wanted to get Sun Tzu as a great and glorious leader of our nation, I would cost me three money. So it's really, really simple. All the tiles either cost money or military, and the higher they are up the road, the more they cost. I got two bucks and one military, because I'm saving this other military for the end of the round. See, now, I don't know what Jen's rolled yet, but you know what? I think I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I happen to roll some more military, and I am going to conquer Babylonia. It cost me one military, boom. And that was the only colony that came out. Uh, there, there could have been, you know, there were actually, I think there were two other colonies here. Yeah, Israel and, I can't read the other one. Uh, uh, the Hindu Kush. But those aren't going to come out this game. In this game, there was only one colony, and I snagged it. All right, so I just put this over here. I've used my military, so it goes up here into the spent area. And now my reward is Babylonia gives me another money chit. So now I've got three money to spend in this era instead of two. All right, so that was my first move. Now it's Jen's turn. She has yet to roll, so she's going to go on ahead and roll. All righty. So, uh, all right. Now, she has three money. She's got two food. She might want to set these aside. Now, that's a big deal. S get, giving up two of your dice just to get one point. I don't know if Jen's going to buy into that, but what's that? She'll set them aside for now, but she might re-roll them later. She also has one stone. Now, stone is used if you're going to try and build wonders, like the Hanging Garden or the Terracotta Army. So maybe, since Jen's got some stone, yeah, what the heck, she'll spend um, two bucks, she'll spend a buck and a buck to buy something from the second row. She can either get the Hanging Gardens or the Terracotta Army. Now, as you can see, either one of them costs two dollars. They both generate one victory point at the end of the game. They both require one stone to build, which Jen has. And they each provide a different permanent benefit. Terracotta Army increases Jen's military by one for the rest of the game. Hanging Gardens increases Jen's food. You know what? I think she's going to take the Hanging Gardens. Yeah. She's going to take this. It costs her two bucks. And it comes over here. You can only have one wonder under construction at a time. But Jen, for her first action, she bought a tile. And so on the next turn, she could use her stone to build it if she wants. Anyway, so that was her turn. Now it's my turn again. I've, I'm saving all these aside. So I've got three bucks. I think, hmm, I'll spend one buck and so I'm going to buy either the elephant or the aqueduct. Now what these do is, these are buildings, or you know, again, facets of our technology, you know, uh, breakthroughs in, in our society. I could get up, I could get aqueducts, but that means I'd have to replace one of my existing buildings. I could replace, and you know, and since they all provide a white dye, it doesn't really matter which one I replace. But what's going to happen is if I replace my quarry with the aqueducts, I basically lose this white die, and now I get a blue die. And I'll have that blue die for the rest of the game, or at least until I get rid of the aqueducts. Now, white dies, they have one of each but two money. So one of each of the icons but two money. If I replace one of my white dies with a blue die, I get three... It's um, There's a culture, a double culture, a triple culture, a stone, a double stone, and a double stone. So if I end up, well, now on the flip side, I could get these elephants, these war elephants, and that would get me one of these red dice, which increases my military potential hugely, gives me some stone, and gives me a little bit of food. So I'm going to buy one of these. Do I want to push harder into military, 
or into um, culture. I think I'll buy the Aqueduct. All right, and, and then we're, I can replace any of them. I'll just go on ahead and replace the Axeman. Now, that means I've got to dump one of my white dice. I could dump any of them. I could dump one of these ones I've set aside, or I could dump a die that I've already paid. So I'll definitely get to do that. I'm going to get rid of this die that I've already paid. And now I have collected a blue die. I get to roll it immediately. That's two culture. And I'll be able to use it in a future turn, including re-rolling it if I want to. So that was my turn. I bought a tile. All right, Jen's turn. Let's see. Now she's got one more buck. Now she's got this stone to start building her hanging gardens, but I, I mean, she'll do that later. She's still got one dollar. I think she's going to spend that and she's going to grab the elephant while the grabbing is good. So she has an elephant. It costs her one buck. And so that means she has to jettison one of her dice. And you know, she could jettison one of these, but these dice are still available. If you can, you always want to jettison a die that you've already spent because you're not going to be doing anything more with it for the rest of the round anyway. So Jen's going to jettison a white die. She's going to get a red, and let's see what she rolls. Ah, the about the lowest thing she could, a single sword. But you know what? That single sword is what she needed to um, fulfill the military requirements at the end of the age. So she's pretty happy with that. All right. So that was Jen's turn. All right, now it's back to me. I've still got two bucks. I've got two culture. And I can still re-roll any of these dice. I can do it once. And let's see. Now the culture, basically, I can't, you, I can't do anything with this. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this isn't culture. This is two stone. So I've got two stone, but I don't have any wonders to build. So I think I'll spend my last two bucks to get the terracotta army. You can see it's on the second row. And I've got it. And so I'm broke now. But I can start working on that because I've got some stone. All right, Jen's turn. Let's see. Now, hmm, she's starting to run out of stuff she can do. She's used this up. She could reroll. She definitely wants to use this stone to get the hanging gardens. But she's got a choice. Once she builds the hanging gardens, that's going to provide her a food. So she won't need one of these dice. So she knows she wants to reroll at least one. And I wonder if she wants to reroll this military. Well, about actually, yeah, you know, she'd want to. Well. Now, it's an interesting thing. Military, we both want to have at least one military to score the victory point, but whoever has the most military will become the first player in the second round. And first player is a big deal. You get first dibs on everything. So I think this turn, Jen is going to re-roll one of her food dice. She's going to keep this one because she knows this and her hanging gardens will take care of it. She's going to keep her stone, but she is going to use her re-roll chit and re-roll both of these and see if she gets something a little bit better. All right, she got some money and a double sword. She's happy about that. That double sword, it fulfills the requirement, but it also means that she, unless I get some more swords, because um, you know I've already used this sword up, it won't go towards my attempting to be first player next turn. It's only swords I have left over, I believe. Let me double check that. I'm pretty sure. Player, determined player, highest total unused swords. So I, Jen's got two, I've got one. Jen's going to be first player next turn. But anyway, so she chose to do a reroll, and her turn is over, and she got a little bit more money. Although, unfortunately, it was only one buck. She can't afford to buy anything because everything costs at least two bucks. All right, well, still. All right, so it's my turn again. I'm saving these. I'm saving this. I am going to do a reroll as well. No, no. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm not going to do a reroll. I'm just going to go on ahead and spend my two stone. Now, it's overspending because I only need one stone to build the terracotta army. But I did it. I built the terracotta army. And now, boom. I've got two swords. And so I've got two swords just like Jen does. And so we are tied in terms of military. So that was my turn. Okay, Jen's turn again, and now she's bummed. Does she? Well, she can't roll again. She doesn't have any more rerolls. The nice thing about having leaders is they give you additional chances to reroll, but nobody bought one, and Jen can't afford one. She can't reroll again. So I guess Jen is going to go on ahead. This turn, she's going to build a wonder. So she's got the hanging gardens, which gives her some food. All right, and now it's my turn again. And remember, you can buy tiles, you can build wonders, or you can reroll. And. So I could do a reroll. I could reroll all of these things and try to get some more money so that I could buy some more stuff. But I think I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to pass. Now that means I am out. Other players, they might still take multiple turns depending on how things go. But I am done. I am now ready for the end of round scoring. Okay. And so back to Jen. So unfortunately, she's only got one buck. She can't afford the uh, that Egyptian ruler, which is so I think actually, and she can't reroll, so Jen is going to pass too. So we both pass fairly quickly. So we are done 
with um, with the era. Now, at the end of the era, era, we produce and score our books. And what that means is, well, did anybody produce any culture? Nope. Nobody has any culture. So our culture doesn't advance at all. Um, we, we advance in warfare. You know, we built some stuff. I conquered some stuff. But nobody actually improved their culture. So the culture stays the same, and now we score it. Whoever is in the lead scores one point for everybody they're ahead of. So if we were playing like a three-player game and Jen was out in front of everybody, she'd score two points. Now in a two-player game, there's a special rule. Whoever is in the lead of a two-player game scores two points. So Jen, because her culture is ahead of mine, scored two points automatically. And you know that might be something I want to deal with. If I could have rolled three books instead of this two stone, I could have saved it. I would have pulled ahead and I would have scored the points. But as it is, I built instead of improved culture. So we're done scoring our books. And now we deal with famine and player order and war. Famine. Whoever has two food left over can use it. I'm, Jen's using hers. I'm using mine. So both of us dealt with potential famine. Nobody and everybody gained one point. Hooray. Now we determine player order. Who has the most unused swords? As it happens, both of us have two. So we're tied, and that means, um, well, basically, I will continue to be the first player. Jen was hoping to pull ahead, but she didn't. If um, I hadn't gotten the other one, then she'd become first player, I'd be second player, but as it is, we're tied, so it stays the same. And now, finally, after player order, we can fight any wars we have to fight. Remember, we need to develop one um, military. Jen produced two, I produced two, so we overproduced. But that means we both scored one point. And that's it, folks. We are done with the first era. Now, um, the, any tiles that didn't get built go away, including, you know, so they're all gone. New ones come out. I'll just put them out here randomly. There's a guild hall, which lets you, oh, gets you two dice. England, the Sahara, Sahara trade, chicken eat, uh, chicken eat, uh, porcelain tower, a uh, Knigget, windmills. Watermills and Prussia. All right, two um, colonies way up here, but they cost three. One colony which costs one. Um, right. Oh, and also, and so that stuff comes out. We find out what the requirements are for the second era. We remove this. The second era. At the end of the era, we score two, up to four points if we have two food and two military. Now, as it happens, both of us. Well, I've got. All right. So now we take all our stuff down, including all our chits. And this then becomes our second round starting situation. We each still have five dice, um, and we have to roll. I am still the first player because I won the military battle, and so we're ready to start the second round. Now, if you folks would like to see a second round, heck, this game plays so fast, maybe I'll finish a full game. Um, or maybe not, we'll see. If you want to hit the button, then follow the links on screen to the extended playthrough. Otherwise, you can uh, hit the button or follow the show notes to so final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.